the serve in volleyball. A strong player has one goal. Make it as hard as possible for the ball to be received. A nice range of physics can be applied. Drag, lift, and trajectory. The key to this problem is minimizing the time that the ball spends in the air. This can be broken down into simply optimizing the path that the ball follows and maximizing the velocity. Let's start by creating a map of a standard volleyball court. We have two halves of 9 by 9 meters and a net that is 2.43 meters high. Now let's look at our projectile motion equations. Remember, we want to minimize time, so let's see what values affect the time value. If we rearrange this equation, we can see that time depends on the angle, distance, and velocity. If you decrease the angle and increase the velocity, the time would decrease. We'll take a player to use as an example. How about Aoba Josai setter, Toru Oikawa, who is about 1.8 meters tall and is said to have the best serve among all Japanese high schoolers. Now if we look at the relationship between the angle and height, you'll notice that the height at which a player serves makes a rather minimal effect on the angle because the shorter player simply manipulates the angle only by a few degrees to get it over the net the same way. This graph from a 2006 paper on the very topic of optimizing a volleyball serve shows the minimal difference that height plays, only about a change in 0.015 seconds between a 7 foot and 5 foot player, that is for an optimal flat serve. Despite what you may think, Oikawa does not hit flat serves. Anyway, Oikawa's jumping reach is 3.35 meters, shorter than those of Ushijima, Bokuto, and Kageyama. So the reason that only he has the crowd yell ole for him is in his precise technique. Before we get into that, let's think about what happens as we maximize the velocity. Oikawa is taller than the net, so if he used all his power to make the perfect angle right over it, downwards flattening the curve, well, it would go far out of bounds. But what if he adjusted his angle so that it would exactly strike the 18 meter away end line? Well, then geometrically the ball would be half the starting height in the middle point, a meter lower than the net line. Here we can introduce another factor to the serve, the horizontal angle. You can increase the distance by serving to a corner instead, and pair that with an increased velocity to maintain the same time value as if you were to do the same serve straight on. So this is one way that allows the server to increase the velocity, but it seems that the real key to optimization is another aspect to the volleyball serve entirely. The spin. Top spin. Top spin is when a ball spins in the direction that it is struck, backspin going in the opposite direction. Based on the RPM at which you make the ball spin, you can create a heavy downward force, call it Magnus force, or Kata Jokowski lift. This would manipulate these weak, standard projectile arcs, creating a force that acts perpendicularly to the tangential velocity of the ball. So you need to find its components in order to calculate for that downward acceleration. Calculating for this force is rather extensive. The main thing to note is that this force is proportional to both the angular velocity, how fast it spins, and the tangential velocity, how fast it's moving. To hit with topspin, you toss the ball already with topspin and strike it towards the top and follow the spin with your hand. The combined forces of gravity and the vertical component of the Magnus force will have an acceleration value that allows the ball to reach the ground faster. For a closer look at the effect of spin, Take a look at this graph. There is a greater decrease in time as you increase the spin rate as opposed to height. Also, by introducing spin, you'll be able to initially strike the ball with a greater velocity. Anyway, let's finally return to Oikawa's serve. Keeping these ideas of spin and trajectory in mind, we first want to find the perfect angle in terms of its tangential velocity. Firstly though, we want to find the maximum horizontal angle that you could be hitting, which would equal about 27 degrees calculated simply by creating this triangle. Now we want the vertical angle at which he should strike in terms of the tangential velocity that he hits the ball. It needs to just go over the net, so if you draw a diagram for this situation, you would be able to use the projectile path formula and calculate the theta in terms of the velocity. Then there's the matter of spin. Really there's no limit to this factor. Oikawa should aim to maximize it as much as possible. Professionals have a spin of up to 14 revolutions per minute. There is also drag to consider. I'll leave that up to you to think about, 
the force is proportional to the tangential velocity squared, so to find the immediate effect of drag, you would take the derivative at desired points in the arc. In the Webb Lithio paper I've been referencing throughout the video, their optimal serve speed went from 32.75 feet per second to 36 feet per second to overcome drag when they tested this effect experimentally. Finally though, a volleyball player's true skill comes from his game sense and strategy. Hitting at the weaker receivers as opposed to the skilled liberos is important and scores points. But even more important is to experiment yourself and decide what works. Maybe a floater would work better for your technical style or side spin or even a nice underhand. And of course, be sure to comment about your thoughts and findings.